At least 45 people were shot, four of them killed, including the Chicago police officer since last night. And according to the Chicago Sun-Times, so far this month, 155 people have been shot in gun violence across the city. And I want to start with Giano in this, but I want to just kind of clarify for context very quickly. You talk about the Sun-Times article. That article was posted at 6.11 this morning. So from 7 o'clock last night until 6.11 this morning, 11 hours and 11 minutes, 40 45 people were shot. That's more than four people per hour. And Terrible. if anybody doesn't think that Chicago, uh, the South Side, the West Side, are war zones at this point in time, they need to look at the numbers again. You're from Giano, and you, I know this is very personal to you. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's really unfortunate that it is a war zone, Chicago. And I recently had a situation. My younger sister called me last week. I was in Italy. And she told me that the night before, she was leaving the grocery store when two people, a man and a woman, walked up to her and attacked her. It was unprovoked. She had her three-month-year-old son with her, my nephew. They beat her down to the ground, kicked her in the face, kicked her in her stomach, and then pulled a gun out on her and told her mm -hmm. that they would kill her and her son. These are issues that many individuals across the city, whether you be on the south sides or west sides where it has historically happened, the violence, or whether you be downtown on the Gold Coast or even in Lincoln Park, where there's usually a younger white group of folks, college students live. There's been mass shootings in those areas, which we had never seen before. Who's to blame? The mayor of Chicago, the Cook County prosecutor especially. The Cook County prosecutor, Kim Fox, has released 25,000 felony cases, including murder uh, cases. There was an analysis by the Sun-Times also that showed in the last six years, over a thousand shootings, almost 150 people who died from those shootings, two convictions out of over a thousand people. This is not an American city. The leadership needs to, leadership needs to be kicked out, and the residents of Chicago have to start telling on the people who are committing the crimes. Snitching needs to be the new season in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, our hearts go out to, to you and your family. That story, heart-rending details. She's okay. John. Thank God she's okay now. Yeah, Thank you. That is, that is good news. But you bring up great numbers, and you know, you talk about murderers being released. I mean, they're, they're running out of ankle bracelets. They're releasing murder suspects in Chicago and running out of ankle bracelets. So in some cases, you have murder suspects just wandering around with no checks, with no observation at all. And, Abby, you know, you, you listen to the police officers who are under fire and the people in, the, in these neighborhoods under fire. I want to play this soundbite from the Reverend Eugene Rivers on the problem of the violence and then get your response. Black on black violence is a problem. You can't say that you're for, uh, say, Black Life Matters, which is ridiculous, and then refuse to confront the fact that black people are killing black people. Then you want to defund the police. That's absurd. It's irresponsible. And any politician that, 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 that suggests that uh, should be, that they should be defunded. <laughs> We often wonder, Abby, that why on a day like this, when you had 45 shootings and you had two police officers shot, why are there not rallies? Why are there not marches through the streets of these cities by Black Lives Matters and others who are concerned? Absolutely. And the only thing that we did see was all of the police officers showing up for uh, that fallen officer and the one who's fighting for his life right now. And again, our thoughts and prayers go out to them. But the Reverend brings up a really good point. Why are you still trying to defund the police? Why, Corey Bush, are you saying these things that you said last week? We talked about it all last week. But here's my thoughts, is that when you pu push that sort of rever uh, rhetoric, it's not just dangerous because of what the obvious implications of what defund the police means. It's dangerous because you're making these police officers feel like they just have no support every time they put on that uniform and leave their families behind. The ones who are still going to work, like uh, the woman who just died, and she left behind a two-month-old baby. She just came back from maternity leave, and she put her life on the line for others. Ella French, you can take a... She was just back from maternity leave, rather. Um, at I'm hearing now that we don't know if she was back from maternity leave, but she did leave behind a yep. two-month-old baby. And again, to me, I, yeah. I, try to, I try to relate it if you're just a normal human being and, and you're going into an operating table mm -hmm. and you're asking the surgeon to save your life and you turn to him or her and say, hey, uh, I want to defund you. I don't really support what you're doing, but actually, can you still save my life? That's what's happening with these police officers. They're, again, going out with little to no support, and it's a rhetoric that needs to change.
You talked about Cori Bush and, and what she said last night was about, you know, paying for security because she pays for it because she says her life has been threatened and yet she still wants to defund the police. It is a soundbite that is worth playing again. So here it is. And then, Lisa, you can get response okay. on the backside. I'm going to make sure I have security because I know I have had attempts on my life and I have too much work to do. So if I end up spending 200000 if I spend 10, 10, 10 more dollars on it, you know what? I get to be here to do the work. So suck it up and defunding the police has to happen. When we're talking about every single year increasing the budget for police and then, and then, and then the budget for like health and human services continuing to shrink, and St. Louis being number one for police violence year after year after year, number one, number two for homicides year and year after Congress year. One. So when, when, when we're adding more money to the police, but but we're still dying. So Congress something has I, to change. I, yeah. Just for clarity, Lisa, she said it on Wednesday and then doubled down this morning. Yeah, and Trace, she talks about the attempts on her life. What about the attempts on the lives of the people living in Chicago, the majority of the shooting victims are black there. What about their lives? Do their lives matter to Cori Bush and Democrats like her who believe in defunding the police? And Ella French was 29 years old, her entire life ahead of her. There's another police officer fighting for his life right now. But people like Cori Bush don't care. Lori Lightfoot does not care. Joe Biden does not care. Kamala Harris does not care because you know why? They have made police officers the target in america they have glorified criminals while making cops the bad guys jacob blake kamal harris said she was proud of him a man who sexually assaulted a woman showed up at her house again pulled a knife on police officers but she's proud of him is that someone that we should be proud of as a society cities like new york putting up statues of george floyd a man who along with his friends robbed a house and put a gun to a woman's stomach is that someone we should be lionizing as a society? Do you start to see the problem yep. of why we have criminals acting with impunity and police officers who are being gunned down in our streets? We need to rethink this thought process. And Democrats are to blame, particularly the ones who have called for defunding mm -hmm. the police in America. What do, you, what do you think, Gianna, last thoughts on this? Is it that, that they don't care or is it that they don't know what to do? I mean, this has been a problem that's been underway for a long time in Chicago. What are your final thoughts on this? Well, my final thoughts are this city has become a complete war zone for so many of the citizens there. You should be more tough on crime instead of lenient. So why would you drop 25,000 felony cases, including murders, Kim Fox, if you really cared? That's a really principal point that Lisa made there. And I don't believe that they really care in the way that they should to, to change the dynamics for many of the residents that are in the city of Chicago. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.